Hey everybody, this is uh, Osama Al Shabi. I'm wearing uh, my special green uh, kufya for is in celebration of the Iranian protest. Well, not celebration, more like uh, solidarity. And I, I'm very upset with what I've been seeing on on the news. Not really the news. It's more been like people on the streets, places like Twitter and Facebook have been helping uh, get the word out. Also, people have been making um, reporting with their cell phones because uh, cameras get confiscated. There's been a, a death, kind of a martyr through this. Um, her name is Neda. But we also have with us an um, Iranian guy. And um, he's living in America, but he's from Iran, and he's been watching what's been going on. And what, what do you want to say? How can people support you guys? What do we do? We do we have any power out here in the out here in the rest of the world? What what the hell can we do? There's, uh, there's tons of petitions out there. There's tons of petitions to uh, to United Nations, to Law uh, International Court. You can sign on as as as, an, as a member of uh, of uh, of the planet, not necessarily as an Iranian, as as a, as a civilian, and uh, um, and voice your opposition by signing petitions. By going on the internet and supporting people who are putting out statements, getting the word around. If you know any Iranians, if you run a website, uh, try to spread the word, spread the news, because there's lots of rumors. The government is blocking out basically everything to prevent people from communicating. And those who live outside of Iran have the responsibility or at least the options of, of trying to. Okay, well, uh, can I tell you what I heard? I heard the voting was completely fair and honest and. There was no corruption at all, and everything was completely legit. Is that true? No. Uh, where did you hear that from? What source? A little fairy, a little birdie, came to me at <laughs> night. He was pink, and he had yellow wings. <laughs> but the little birdie, the uh, probably was. Uh, so okay, uh, it's obviously it's fr fraud, right? What's that? It's fraud. We're talking fraud. Uh, We're talking it's, it's major like, yeah, voter fraud. fraud. But I'm saying. What if they counted everything? I mean, can't you do an independent recount? What, like, what is this protesting? What do you want? You're, you're obviously not in Iran, but you're upset about this, right? I'm not, I'm not quite scared. It's, uh, that's not the word I would describe uh, what I'm going through. What are you going through? And, um, it's, it's actually hard to, hard to explain it. If anybody is an expat and if they're away from their country, your country becomes more of a, not just a place you live in and you you know wake up every morning and you know you go to do things. It becomes uh, uh, the fact that it's such a vital part of your 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 mind, your existence. But you don't have I'm to live attached to it. What's that? I mean, but you do live here in the United States. You don't have to go back. But you're going back to go to go be part of this. You may do this. Uh, maybe I'm just going to be with my family during this time and just really worried about my. Uh, Brother and sister, right? And friends. How can yes. you explain to people like how serious this is? I mean, a lot of young folks don't remember the Iranian Revolution, which was 1978 or 79. 1979. 79. I do remember because I was a kid, and some folks may know this. I'm Iraqi, and you are Irani, and our countries fought a war for for many years, seven years, right? And. Thank you. But now I think they kind of have uh, 
a brotherhood, sisterhood with each other. But Iran has a long history with this, and this is reminiscent of the 79 revolution. But let me ask you this, 79 revolution had a lot of religious impact. This seems more hip, more the Twitter generation, the more educated, young, um, urban, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, everyone seems young. Similar uh, to, to the 79 revolution, right? I think if you make a comparison between the two, um, there definitely is a religious um, 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 element in there is? Uh, of motivation. The difference is that 1979, uh, they were facing a secular regime, Shah. And this time, uh, people are protesting against the... Uh, "Quote unquote," declared uh, religious regime. Religious right, that government. guy's got to go. That guy's a motherfucker. I don't know why people listen to him. Well, that's that, that's basically why there's violence uh, throughout the country in Iran. And um, what is he like, Santa Claus? Why does he get to be supreme leader? Ask the question again. Why does he get to be supreme leader? He seems like this big Santa Claus father figure that takes care of everyone. Like whatever he says is gold. Why does he have that much power? This is uh, this is very complicated. There's I hear I'm reading different reports every day on why uh, the supreme leader is. But do you? But do you like? Do you? What would what would be ideal? What what should come out of this that's good? That's for Iran. Like what? Everyone's screaming and fighting. What do you? What would work? What do we need to? I think at this point, uh, some of the ideals they had in my mind are probably not possible anymore because the possibilities right now is what to look at. Uh, one, the government is going to succeed to suppress people, and in which case, you're going to become a police state from now on and become much more uh, press, oppressive. And the second is the, if it will prevail. At this point, we're not talking about just taking out the president. We're talking about the whole system because the supreme leader is behind the president, which means the president will go down, the whole system is going to collapse. And in this case, Iran will might face possibly a civil war, different factions, the, uh, the Shah, the poor Shah from back in the day, they were still active but outside of Iran, the communists, the, the Mujahideen in Iraq, Al-Qaeda, U.S., Israel, you name it, it's going to become a piece of pie and everybody's going to get a share, their own share of it. And in that case, there's no more Iran around. But ideally, I'd like to see um, Ahmadinejad possibly accepting the fact that he did something wrong in the election and just uh, cancel the elections and have read elections and then have international monitors and this way the structure of the government is the same because we cannot afford revolution like that. Revolution is not safe. All right, man. Um, thank you for your time and uh, we'll talk later. Bye. Bye. All right. There you have it. Um, this is a cold alcoholic beverage called Vira for the Iranian protest. I... If I could, I would be over there with you, but I can't because I'm here in the United States. I have no money. But my spirit's with you. Power to the people. Um, just do what you got to do. I hope you. I hope things work out. I mean, I'm certainly sick of seeing all these creative people that don't have outlets and I don't know everyone deserves a, a better life and a, and a good life and uh, I don't like what's going on all this killing is, is stupid so I, I support you from all the way over here in, in Chicago the best way that I can alright thanks